Chapter 16 The Baker's Dozen If a dozen is twelve, why is a baker's dozen thirteen? Read this play to find out how this tradition began. In the Dutch colonial town later known as Albany, New York, there lived a baker, Van Amsterdam, who was as honest as he could be. Each morning, he checked and balanced his scales and he took great care to give his customers exactly what they paid for, not more and not less. Van Amsterdam's shop was always busy because people trusted him and because he was a good baker as well. And never was the shop busier than in the days before December 6, when the Dutch celebrate St. Nicholas Day. At that time of year, people flocked to the baker's shop to buy his fine St. Nicholas cookies. Made of gingerbread, iced in red and white, they looked just like St. Nicholas as the Dutch know him. Tall and thin, with a high red bishop's cap and a long red bishop's cloak. One St. Nicholas day morning, the baker was just ready for business, when the door of his shop flew open. In walked an old woman, wrapped in a long black shawl. I have come for a dozen of your St. Nicholas cookies. Taking a tray, when Amsterdam counted out twelve cookies, he started to wrap them, but the woman reached out and stopped him. I asked for a dozen. You have given me only twelve. Madam, everyone knows that a dozen is twelve. But I say a dozen is thirteen. Give me one more. When Amsterdam was not a man to bear foolishness. Madam, my customers get exactly what they pay for, not more and not less. Then you may keep your cookies. She turned to go, but stopped at the door. Van Amsterdam, however honest you may be, your heart is small and your fist is tight. Fall again, mount again and learn how to count again. Then she was gone. From that day, everything went wrong in Van Amsterdam's bakery. His bread rose too high or not at all. His pies were sour or too sweet. His cakes crumbled or were chewy. His cookies were burnt or doughy. His customers soon noticed the difference. Before long, most of them were going to other bakers. That old woman has bewitched me. Is this how my honesty is rewarded? A year passed. The baker grew poorer and poorer. Since he sold little, he baked little, and his shelves were nearly bare. His last few customers slipped away. Finally, on the day before St. Nicholas Day, not one customer came to Van Amsterdam's shop. At the day's end, the baker sat alone staring at his unsold St. Nicholas cookies. I wish St. Nicholas could help me now. Then he closed his shop and went sadly to bed. That night, the baker had a dream. He was a boy again, one in a crowd of happy children, and there in the midst of them was St. Nicholas himself. The bishop's white horse stood beside him. Its baskets filled with gifts. Nicholas pulled out one gift after another and handed them to the children. But when Amsterdam noticed something strange, no matter how many presents Nicholas passed out, there were always more to give. In fact, the more he took from the basket, the more they seemed to hold. Then Nicholas handed a gift to Van Amsterdam. It was one of the baker's own St. Nicholas cookies. When Amsterdam looked up to thank him, but it was no longer St. Nicholas standing there. Smiling down at him was the old woman with the long black shawl. When Amsterdam awoke with a start, moonlight shone through the half-closed shutters as he lay there thinking. 
I always give my customers exactly what they pay for. Not more and not less. But why not give more? The next morning, St. Nicholas Day, the baker rose early. He mixed his gingerbread dough and rolled it out. He cut the shapes and baked them. He iced them in red and white to look just like St. Nicholas. And the cookies were as fine as any he had made. When Amsterdam had just finished, when the dough flew open, in walked the old woman with the long black shawl. I have come for a dozen of your St. Nicholas cookies. In great excitement, Van Amsterdam counted out twelve cookies. And one more. In this shop, from now on, a dozen is thirteen. You have learned to count well. You will surely be rewarded. She paid for the cookies and started out. But as the dough swung shut, the baker's eyes seemed to play a trick on him. He thought he glimpsed the tail end of a long red cloak. 